All right, what's up everybody? I'm Steve from Liquid Light Lab. Today we're going to talk about color wheels and ripple wheels. So here I have two of them that I've made. And basically these are discs of plexiglass that either have colored gels on them or are just warped. Um, and these will either uh, transmit light or refract light in a variety of different ways. So here you can see if I were to uh, pass this disc in front of this light right here, you can see how some of the light gets cast here. Or I can also refract light by passing it through. And you can see how the light gets all distorted and pretty crazy and cool looking. And this is my method. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this as well. Like most light show techniques, um, it's very organically put together. So a lot of times people have their own approaches to it. Here's a couple of important things that you'll need. You'll need a plexiglass disc. You'll need some kind of a motor. In this case, I have a slow geared motor. This is a 20 RPM motor. You're gonna need a way to connect the disc to the motor. So you'll also need some flanges. You need a drill because we're gonna have to drill a hole in the middle of this. And for our color wheel, we got these beautiful lighting gels that we're gonna cut up and glue on it. And this is really the fun part. You can get very creative with this. There's just an infinite amount of patterns that you can make. And if you make it look cool, you get a pretty cool looking color wheel in addition to a cool functioning one. And that I like. So we have our disc. And we got this covering on it. So let's take that off. Don't you just love peeling things off? I love that. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that is a good peel right there. Holy moly. All right, and this is our plexiglass disc that we will be working with. So the next step is to drill a hole in the center, but we do need to find the center of it. So here's eight inches. Now the next step is going to be to attach a flange and we're gonna drill holes over here so then we can attach these screws to it. All right, let's get some gels on here. Uh, I have these Roscoe lighting gels and I have a variety of different colors here. And I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do like a spiral pattern coming out of it. So first let's pick our colors. I personally, I just love like rainbow fades. I love things that go chromatically from one thing to the other. Um, but then maybe throw like a surprise uh, odd color in there that you wouldn't expect just to change it up. So, I don't know. Let's start with red. And this one come out. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I got some clear glue here. Let me go do another one. What other color am I gonna do? So we'll do a very light marker this time. Motherfucker. And let me go to orange. kind of cool got these like spots on there I like that all right let's go into a different part of the color spectrum getting there it's a little weird but I kind of like it I don't know is green gonna work here do I want green in there yeah why not let's do it Yeah, 
You know, I'm gonna go ahead and put some some dark blue in there. All right, it's coming along. We'll fill out the final side with a lavender. All right, and here we have a rudimentary color wheel with some abstract stuff on it. All right, our next step is to take this color wheel, which I think looks very cool, and we're gonna put on a motor connected to a driver and a power supply and put it on our tripod so we can put it in front of a projector. You gotta figure out a way to make this thing spin. This is gonna go like so, within the pin, there's a little Allen screw there. So we have here uh, a motor, we have a slow geared motor. This one is 20 RPM, we have a driver, and we have a power supply and at the end of the day what we're going to make looks like this it's a motor which connects to a driver which connects to the power supply coming out of the driver you have a little on and off switch and you also have a speed regulator here it helps to have um, uh, the ability to regulate the speed as well all right let's wire all this up So we're gonna put the hot on the outside and the cold in the middle. This is why having a little screwdriver always helps. There's so many little things that you find with electronics where a little screwdriver helps and it sucks when you don't have one. And I'm gonna go ahead and create some new leads here. Again, just lightly score it, pull it off. Now the amount of electricity that we're dealing with is uh, not a lot of electricity. This is just a 12 volt uh, power supply. All right, and now we have our basic wiring and let's go ahead and plug it in. And you can see a little light came on here and there we go. Cool. All right, um, we're gonna go and put this on something. You could put this on the end of a magic arm where this will clamp to uh, a projector or a piece of truss or something or you know whatever, a shelf or anything like that. And then you can go ahead and just tape the motor to there or zip tie it and it'll be just fine. In our case, we're gonna use just a simple tripod and zip tie it right to the end here. All right, and now we have our little contraption. I like this because it's very versatile. You can adjust this in all kinds of ways, uh, which you'll find useful to be able to manipulate it and get it just right in front of your projector or a light source. And the final step is to attach the color wheel. And what I have is I have a little hex key. And right down here, there's a little screw. Don't tighten it too much because you don't want to strip the screw or anything. And now, look at that, it's on there. So there it is. There's our little color wheel spinning. All right, let's go ahead and finish this up. Up on the screen with my digital projector, I have just an image of the Mona Lisa. And down here is our color wheel on the tripod. As I pull this up, the color wheel is gonna now start spinning in front of the projector beam. 
and as it does that voila we have some stuff moving across the screen so we went from that white to now this and as I I can increase the speed and also depending on where I put this different parts of this pattern that I created are going to hit the beam at different parts I can also move this thing left and right and all kinds of ways so you got to experiment with it a bit maybe slow it down just a little bit I find that these things work pretty well when they're kind of slow although there are times when making it go fast helps as well this thing here as well can make it go from one way to the other and we can reverse it and there you have it color wheel all right and here's just one more i want to talk about the importance of negative space so unlike the video before where we had a lot of white around mona here we have all this black and it's the same color wheel doing the same thing but you can see that it's affecting just the image because we have a lot of black on the outside and that's not really being affected by the color wheel because there is no white light to color let's speed it up a bit Alright, thanks for watching.